what what are you and Rebecca doing with um, the homestead, um, surrender homestead? What are you guys doing with that? Um, I know you you guys are just starting with it, and like it, it, it sounds so beautiful. Like literally, when I was researching you, um, I went to like I started like Google Earthing Portugal and like looking at where <laughs> like where like and I was looking at like the temperatures and the culture and the GDP and the living standards and like it's beautiful. Like it's amazing. I've been yeah. To, hopefully, you saw why we chose that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So tell us about uh, the surrender homestead. Yeah, so um, it fits very much with what you just said about how, um, you know, like I don't, I, I guess I'm not fundamentally identified as a scientist who's doing this. I, I'm fundamentally just a person who's trying to be honest about what I see as important in the world. And when it comes to, for me, like being open about spiritual stuff was also a kind of taboo in this kind of scientific circles I moved in. But I kind of, I think it's just within me that I, I think I've always had just a feeling of, if I hold true to what I think is authentic and real and, and, you know, like, and true, and, I, and I'm just truthful about it. Um, if people don't get it or if culture isn't, is, isn't ready, then culture isn't ready. Like that's not my problem. You know, if I'm, if I uh, take some magic mushrooms and society says that's an illegal activity, that's bad, you know, I can give up, I can absolutely give account as to why I do it, why I think it's, it's not harmful, why I think it's incredibly beneficial. Right. So, the, that's also that same logic and the same with vulnerability you know with trying to you know I, I want to live in a world where especially for like men can can be more vulnerable emotionally yes. and it would be it would be a bit rich for me to not then put myself out there and say like look this is this is who I am I you know I'm going to try and live from a place of, of truth um and yeah so it makes life a lot easier as well if you just <laughs> if you just don't hold anything back um so then when it comes to the surrender homestead we have a bunch of different ideas of what we want to do. We'd love to maybe host retreats, like, you know, maybe ayahuasca retreats, stuff like that. Um, we also, my, my wife really wants it to be a kind of artist residency, a place people can come and just create and just have like studios and we're just in nature. So people can just kind of connect with nature and, and all that kind of good stuff. But yeah, we're in, we're in the early stages. We're kind of renovating. We bought this big bit of land. We're renovating an old, an old farmhouse. But the fact that we kind of find ourselves here is really, because of the same thing we just spoke about and, and because my wife's in the same wavelength of being like well we're humans you know humans are these creatures that are born into nature we're, we're supposed to be in nature we're supposed to create like this is what's good for us to exercise you know be in the sunshine and yeah. we spent our years you know in london and these places like you know you know tr working hard to establish ourselves but there was always this feeling of like society is a bit of a crazy <laughs> it's it's a, it's sick in many ways i would say and so the fact that we find ourselves here is fundamentally living from that place of authenticity of being like this is where we we would prefer to be will and and the thing you said of like potential like we know being here will lead to something good like we may not be able to say next year we're going to hold an ayahuasca retreat or next year we're going to be open to accept artists for residency but we know something's going to happen we know yeah. people you know like we're in a beautiful location we have you know intention to share it with people in some capacity so yeah. so yeah keep it keep an eye on i think the surrender homestead on instagram is our best place to keep up with us um if you want to see us assembling composting toilets and stuff like that as well <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. um, so so beautifully said we have the economic machinery that is uh producing so much excellence and also so much um deterioration and so to wake up to archiving the codes that are deteriorating and amplifying the codes that are making things better in that machinery and also building you know cities 2.0 because people love urban centers so time to build those up into the 2.0 category and also um especially with our ecology bringing together architecture and ecology but um sustainability but also having places where we literally just go, no, like, it, like, I don't want to be in city 2.0. I want to be in, um, in extreme. I want to be in the most extreme nature setting. Like sometimes we've envisioned this on the show where you literally can take, like, could you, could you take and build out, um, a beautiful like augmented reality creative space in the middle of the redwoods in California um, or right on the Pacific Ocean um, or the Atlantic in Portugal you know there's there's all of these interesting ways to like embed um, 
kind of the like and you can just turn off that augmented reality space whenever you want and you're just back at the pacific or the atlantic or the redwoods or whatever so um it like to be able to instantaneously ebb and flow between the the two is is, is going to be very important. I'm excited that you guys are building it out. I think it's very, it's a very important project from the heart to do and you want to share, which is very important. And you're going to, you're going to inspire a lot of people by doing that. Um, you already inspired me and many viewers by doing that and hopefully, you know, follow along on, on Instagram and, uh, and maybe within, you know, who knows 2021 could be some sort of cool, um, opening of, of, a yeah. of a, yeah, of an event or you know, the, I love our artists and residencies are going to be very important. Um, and just briefly on the scientific dogma, I think spirituality also has spiritual dogma where there's no interest in science um, and the scientific method. Uh, so I think that when you go extreme uh, Kairos on spirituality, you lose all Kronos. And when you go extreme Kronos on science, you lose all Kairos of uh, spirituality. And so those dogmatic circles um, need to, in a sense, realize that they do not represent the essence of the nature of reality, which is to drop the silos and to more harmoniously merge. Um, so that's in essence what the science and spirituality, and that's why you're doing what you're doing and why we're doing what we're doing. Cause yeah, there is no dividing into two. It's, it is just the one. Yeah. yeah. I think um, that's also, yeah, a really good point that again, all these things are maps, you know, like the reality has no, there is no God's eye view where we can say, this is the correct answer. turns out science is right. Or turns out spirituality is right. They're different angles different perspectives like you were saying in the stadium like you're looking at this this beautiful diamond of existence from all these different angles and i think again i think it's the the this the the pro the, the process of creation and, and control and separation is can often be the thing that fuels kind of fear and and investment in the identity and tribalism and and dog and basically being like i'm a scientist over here because i feel uncomfortable when people talk about woo woo spirituality stuff so i'm gonna just assume it's all nonsense and, and you know and then we hold on to our world views like these blankets right and we're not and again that's what we spoke about <laughs> earlier with consciousness and like i think it's going to be a real uphill battle to to convince this generation of scientists that that plants might be conscious there are lots of plant scientists who think think they are but um yeah i think there was a stephen hawking quote that i'm not gonna be able to remember but it was something to do with like like uh scientific revolutions only happen when like each generation dies effectively <laughs> like when there's a new generation coming up to to hear new, new ideas afresh and you know take them on board and i guess, i think that's because of this emotional attachment um that yeah. you form quite early i guess to ideas my gosh the blanket analogy is very strong there it is it's a uh, it's the sense of uh, of really being warm like it's almost like not wanting to get out of bed in the morning because that that blanket is so warm and if you take the blanket off and you expose yourself to the 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 force is the cold um in in the sense of you're on the you're on the hunt again to try and augment the blankets and try and make a really strong hammock for for you to be able to you know lay in and enjoy it it's it's good to think of of yourself as as wanting to and the same thing with the layers of the onion is another way to view is like do you shed each one of those layers and get back to what is the most fundamental of our existence that shared consciousness shared awareness and that also that is the 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 realization slowly that we have the different maps of science spirituality yeah it's been it's been really solid back and forth on this and i james another thing is i just really appreciate the fact that um one of the things with this big synthesis that i'm passionate about is just at least um whether i'm right or i'm wrong at least i have tried that's what's most important, I think, because with um, living mirror theory of consciousness, it's the same thing. Every single person, whether they're ultimately, you know, right or wrong, or that they're at least moving the foundation of thinking forward, they're ultimately at least trying. And in order to break through from being like 
the fear, right? Like Wayne Gretzky, if you're going to miss every shot you don't take, you have to take the shots. So you're going to take the, we're going to take these shots and at least we're going to push further. So I just congratulate the fact that you pushed and made this and that you're publishing and that you're going to move forward with it on experientially with proving hypotheses. So thank you for inspiring people um, to, to do so. Thank you. But it's interesting because I, I, maybe it's because I've been so weighted towards that side of, of creating like that, but um, where my head is at now is actually kind of on emphasizing the other side of it, which is the kind of being, you know, we were talking about this division between kind yeah. of striving, becoming like doing. And I, um, in the past, I would have been, I would have very gladly just said like, thank you very much. You know, like that's, uh, I, you know, I, nice to be recognized for that. But where I'm at now is I would say like, um, most people like if we if we had more people who are interested in the experiential side of things like cultivating compassion working through their own traumas and stuff like i could i could happily live in a world without science without you know where we kind of move back to a far simpler way of life you know just like living close to nature um you know I, so I, I don't believe in progress for for progress's own sake and it's interesting that i i see in myself and in a lot of other scientists i think a kind of um we spoke about the kind of emotional currents underpinning science. I think a lot of people who get interested in kind of science and philosophy of things like consciousness comes out of some quite deep existential anguish of some kind, you know? And I think for me, there was, there was a kind of very early kind of being physically unsafe as a child was kind of like, is what made me just be like, okay, what's going on? I need to figure out what's going on. And suddenly you're living up in your head and you're like, your mind is racing to figure out what's going on in the world. And I think this isn't something I see spoken about that I think a lot of very talented philosophers, very talented scientists also like should be, when it comes to like psychedelic medicine being made legal, they should be like high up on the list of people to tap them on the shoulder and go like, good work figuring out all that stuff. But maybe you want to go and have a bit of psilocybin therapy and see if there might be some, some fire that's, that's driving you unconsciously and that maybe you might be happier without your mind racing all the time. Because for me, that's, that's kind of what's happened. And that's why I'm here really is, is moving, you know, I'm still continuing to communicate and think about this stuff. And I'm not just gonna, you know, switch off from the science. But I, I definitely, this is coming from someone who I think has always been a bit imbalanced and is finding balance and, and sees, we live in a culture that praises progress so much that I think it's worth saying that like, it's not yes. intrinsically valuable. It's, you know, and it comes in a, in a context of striving for, because you're not happy, I think beautifully beautifully put that yes we're gonna have a, a long-term synthesis of as you can say like the masculine the feminine the science the spirituality the uh the kairos with the chronos like it's just inevitably um going to be uh a a deeper more harmony harmony is always this key word a harmony a harmony um okay let's wrap um beautiful like Man, I just, I am just so passionate about the inquiry that you have, um, and that it's inspiring me, and I hope other people as well. And and also, it's balanced with the also the deep uh, the press that you've had to 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 embody from in your in your heart and to 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 explore what has been who are you individually and what has been what has affected you and um i think that i think that you are in fact a, a very beautiful person that you have a very beautiful story that you have a like james i'm very grateful Thank you for coming on the program. Yeah, for that, I'll say thanks very much. <laughs> no qualification for me on that. <laughs> no, I, I'm, so, I'm so grateful that we got this chance to, to talk and to get to know each other deeper. I'm super grateful. And yeah, same. 